we find ourselves smack dab in the middle of a season of transformation. The solar eclipse this past Monday may be gone, but it brought with it warmer weather, which means that the new life of spring, which the colder temperatures had held back, is about to bloom and is blooming. The buds waiting for the warmth of the spring sun are now beautiful flowers. The birds that made their way south for the winter are now waking us each morning with songs reminding us that this transformation is ongoing. And if flowers and birds are not your thing, there's always tree pollen to remind you that the transformation from winter to spring is almost complete. Every part of our lives is a transformation. Our physical bodies transform as we move through various stages of growth. When we're children, we are solely dependent on the physical care of, of our parents and other adults in our lives. Later in life, we may find ourselves caring for someone else's needs in a manner similar to the way we ourselves were once cared for. And then as we transition into later stages of our lives, we often find some of our physical needs being met by the very people we once cared for. A dear friend of mine, he's a pastor, and he's helping his parents uh, as their lives transform from, or trans, yeah, transform from one stage to the next, and, and he put it like this. It's a beautiful mess. Transformation is messy. As our physical bodies transform over the, over the course of a lived life, so do our minds. Intellectual transformation, or as St. Paul might call it, the renewal of our minds occurs every day. What may seem like drastic changes in the world around us shape our thoughts and renew our minds. Some might say that our minds are renewed through intellectual conformity through allowing ourselves to be impressionable by another person or way of thinking. John Wesley, he's the founder of the Methodist movement. He was an, uh, a, a priest within the Church of England. He would say that our intellect is renewed through reason or making sense of what we are experiencing. Wesley was primarily focused on faith, but the principle applies to every aspect of intellectual growth. We like to think of ourselves as individuals. We like to think of ourselves as free thinkers who make decisions based on our experiences, free from the influence of other people. The modern world has taught us to think of ourselves first and foremost as individuals. And in being free thinking thinkers, we conform to the world as we see it. Or so we are often led to believe. We are led to believe that we ourselves are in control of our own transformation. No matter how much we try to convince ourselves otherwise, we all know that none of us, not a single one of us is an entirely free-thinking thinker. Every one of us is influenced from within the world. And many of you work in fields that influence the world. We locate ourselves within a tribe or a family or a friend group. As we move through our lives, the tribes that we belong to will change. There's no fighting it. As with so many good things, change often comes. In just a few weeks, high school and college seniors are going to be told that through their thoughts and their actions, they will change the world. The speaker will look different, but they will still misquote the same lines from Dr. Seuss while telling graduates that they will transform the world when really the world will, the world is transforming them. The places you'll go will transform you. The places you will go are transforming you. We live in a time where many of us like to think of ourselves as the center 
of our own universe. The truth is no matter the truth is now a matter of opinion because we can find an echo chamber to affirm the truth that we want to believe. The media environment of right now is the choose your own adventure version of truth. And we can hear St. Paul's words, do not be conformed. And we can nod our heads in agreement, believing that we are not conforming to the world all the while. The world and its algorithmic powers are molding us into their image. In this sense, we are certainly not in charge or control of our choices. Not of the media content that we consume on TV or after we find ourselves scrolling for 30 or 45 or 60 minutes. Even as these transform how we live and how we think. Retired United Methodist Bishop Will Willimon. He's a mentor of mine and he's an all-around church curmudgeon. He writes that the, the issue is not conforming, but possession. Bishop Willimon asks, who shall have my mind? To what power structures am I enslaved to whose views of the world have I been conformed? All throughout this season of Eastertide, we are considering wellness, bodily wellness, the wellness of our mind and our soul, the wellness of Christ's body in the light of the resurrection. And this is where the words of St. Paul confront us this morning. Paul writes, I appeal to you, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Do not be conformed to this world. Be mindful of the echo chamber's noise. Be mindful of the tribes telling you what to think. Be mindful of the algorithm trying to direct your attention. As long as as we are still part of a world that wants to conform us to its standards, beliefs, and divisions, we should not expect to be transformed by anything else. And still, St. Paul tells us, do not be conformed, but rather be transformed. Be transformed. Be metamorphosized. Be made anew. Be changed entirely from who you are right now into the image of Jesus Christ, who through his resurrection broke down the gates of hell and defeated everything that separates us from God. Defeated everything that separates us from one another. You see, St. Paul preached what he lived. By birth, Paul was taught that those who lived outside of Israel, held no standing with God. But now in this letter to the church in Rome, the earliest document that the church has today, the tribal divisions are no more. How could such a transformation happen from someone who, whose mission it was to eliminate the church how did Paul avoid conformity with the world and receive transformation through our resurrected Lord? I'm glad you asked. You see, it was through Christ Jesus, Paul writes, that he became a new creation. And it's what he tells the church in Rome, that each of us is a new creation through Christ resurrected, transformed and perfected. You see, Jesus did not simply change Paul's perspective. Paul himself was transformed by conforming to Christ. Jesus knocked Paul right off of his horse on the road to Damascus. Paul was going to Damascus to kill Christians and arrest them. Paul viewed the world in a different manner. He was living in the world differently. 
But after Paul had his encounter with the, our risen Lord, the old tribal divisions for Paul were no more. His world viewed changed because his mind had been renewed. Do not be conformed to this world, says St. Paul, but be transformed. And the good news is that, that God's transformation of you is already underway. The renewal of your mind began when our faithful Lord left his burial clothes in that empty tomb and walked out. And look, I get it. I know that change is difficult. I know that renewal is hard. But I am thankful that God has not left me in the faith or theology that I had when I was younger. I give thanks every day that God has renewed my faith, that God has renewed my mind, so I am not viewing the world as I once did. God has made me to see people in my midst and truly see them in ways that my prejudices would have otherwise prevented. Because of the grace of Jesus Christ and Christ's unfaithfulness, They've been reckoned to me. My understanding of others has been transformed. And this, friends, is how the body of Christ, the church, is transformed. By the renewal of our minds, not by ourselves, not by our own works, but by God's grace. Through the renewing of our minds, God is inviting us into a spiritual transformation. Regardless of what you see on bookshelves in bookstores, spirituality is not a product to be marketed, and it's certainly not something to be consumed. Spirituality is not a yoga retreat sold by the church, not even ours. Instead, spirituality is a new life. It's a transformed life. It is the human response to seeing the glory of the Lord as reflected in a mirror. Practices like worship and prayer and the study of our holy scriptures and other spiritual disciplines are all ways that God is nurturing us as an act of spiritual transformation. Being conformed and transformed by God is part of our United Methodist DNA. John Wesley was engaged in spiritual renewal within the Church of England. John Wesley never sought to make a new church. He sought renewal and transformation. Wesley upset many in the church, but he always viewed his work as being part of the established church, being part of Christ's body, and not apart from it. To be metamorphosized into God's own image, as Paul writes, is not something that we can do on our own. It's not something you can do by yourself. There are no intellectual accomplishments by which you can make this happen. This transformation we experience is something God is doing to each of us. It's a byproduct of being encountered by our living God. How good is this news that you are transformed? You are being transformed. You have been redeemed and you have been saved by our risen Lord and you didn't have to do a thing. It's all a gift of God's grace. So why would you? Why would you want your mind to be conformed to this world when you can experience Christ's transforming grace? Amen.